indeed. So you've no pressure at all there. And does this work? Is it going to work? One. It does. Okay, so I can breathe a little easier. I have a topic for this nine minutes, and it's that bringing digital content into physical spaces. Sounds a bit dull. Um, maybe a vision and informed engagement. What? That sounds even more dull. Uh, hopefully that will make sense at the end of this uh, eight minutes. Um, first, there is a little introduction to me. That's who I am. There's a picture to prove it. That means that, <coughs> yeah, I am officially a designer, digital designer at a company called Ico Design. We work in these three areas, design, digital, and brand. We're right in the middle of those things. And we do lots of work for museums and galleries. So what that kind of means is, a lot of the time, I'm talking, giving presentations in boardrooms to particular people. Nothing is as terrifying as this. <laughs> a room full of people, half drunk, staring at you in a pub, it kind of feels a little bit like this. <laughs> a little bit, I'm giving a PowerPoint presentation, well, actually a keynote presentation, inappropriately. So I can only apologise. Um, but yeah, I'm going to have science show because we work with museums and galleries. So I thought that, that idea that kind of digital and physical, that um, these two things already exist. Digital already exists in the physical space. And I can prove that because this photograph, I don't know if anyone can see that there at the back, it's a photograph of what used to be reading the Sunday papers in bed the other morning. About four weeks ago, I took this photo of my wife watching Strictly Cup Dancing. One son playing a game on iTouch, me reading the Kindle, and actually me nicking the other screen off my youngest son to take that photograph. <laughs> so there's a whole thing of, you know, digital is all around, all the time. How do uh, museums and galleries respond to this? Well, that's what I was thinking about. So we've done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you two projects and talk you through a little bit of the process. Hopefully that won't be dull. Um, the Science Museum, we do lots of work for. And my two uh, points here are information and engagement. Information is the first point. The Science Museum thought, actually, we put loads of digital content out. There's loads of digital content on our website up to date about events that are happening. Uh, if you look at it for today, if you look at their website, there's loads and loads of things happening. Rather than being here, you could be at late, but you wise people have chosen to be here instead. Well, there's lots of stuff. <laughs> Much better, a much better event. But basically there's all this information they're updated, keeping up to date with what's going on. And unless you've got a smartphone, it's not so good for folk already in the museum. So you're in, you're wandering around, you don't know, there might be something really, really interesting going on on the floor above or around the corner. Um, so for the Science Museum, they said, why not let's dock screens, internet-enabled screens around the, around the space, like that. We just put what's on. It'll be very simple. It'll be very straightforward. Well, then they said, we said, well, couldn't you just do a little app for that? And they said, no, we want to do it for the physical space. So, fine. They also said, some of the screens are different sizes. And some of the screens are different orientation. So you have to be able to work with them. Okay. So we went back to, we went to the starting point, thinking, what can we do? How can we, what's the best way of displaying this information? And being designers, we stripped it back to its essential components. Somebody talked earlier about as well museum for liking to have a regimental system. We looked at how complex this information was and started thinking, actually it is quite complicated. You've got different things on different floors at different times. Maybe we could uh, stack them so you know where your where each thing is taking place in the museum on a spatial level. Maybe there's a, a map of the whole day at the bottom. So we can put that information across. We can show you where you are in time, what time these other events are taking place. Is there something you might miss now that you might see later? Can we give you a little photograph, a little insight into that? Like I say, being designers, we couldn't help ourselves throwing this information at it. And we went through lots and lots and lots of iterations of showing time, showing events, showing time and events, big time, small time, the whole thing, individual events at once. And what we found was, doing all of all this, a lot of the time we ended up coming back, complex and more complex, coming back to something that we really started with right at the very beginning. 
Let's just be as simple as possible. The final solution. Execution. It's now up in the gallery. I still think there should be a, a version of it where you can get it online in your palm of your hand as well. There's not anyone from the Science Museum here, is there? This is my book. You should do both. It's not one thing or the other. But it made me think that, you know, simplicity, we learn a lot through that. We're going through, we could do this, we could do that, we could have lots of comple um, complexity, but simplicity is good. Um, simple information, who doesn't want that? Steve talked about people that he followed on Twitter before. I don't know if anyone follows this, it's a really useful, simple piece of information. Um, is Thatcher dead yet? <laughs> You're going to update. <laughs> Just so you know, just to keep you informed. Just a little bit of information. I don't know, I don't know, maybe it's too far. It may be too far, I'm sorry, but also there's a website just in case you want to know. The, the website is actually endorsed and hated by the Daily Mail. Uh, but there is a Spotify playlist connected. You can uh, choose to play at the party. Um, so, sorry, no, I think the infla information alone isn't enough. And, um, and museum, there's museums and galleries. You have this kind of, you can capitalise on having a space where engagement happens. Um, we were asked by a charity, a charity called Be Inspired, I don't know if anyone knows, it's to encourage young people to volunteer, to volunteer in charity. Um, and what they wanted to do was to find a way to get people, to get young people to tell them what they cared about. Um, so we had to find a way of engaging kids to participate in that. So we thought about maybe we could display the information in an interesting place. <laughs> Put it off in a football stadium. Or maybe it's about an unusual way of delivering this message. Have it knitted to an physical object. And then we thought, maybe we look at things that could draw. So you know the scrambler, the, the um, uh, fairground ride? Looks a bit like this. It, it's been used, it actually, it draws beautifully. Mm. It drew that. Like this, by putting paint in it and it's right around. But it, what we found was, it couldn't actually draw your words. We looked at kind of drawing toys, little robots. They could be programmed to draw. And some of those kind of are useful. You could get a kind of message through them. Um, so we thought, well, maybe we could do something with that. Maybe we could use robots, industrial robots, from a carpenter. And then we thought, who should see this? The important thing is who's looking at this, the audience. And maybe MPs might be the thing. So we put the robot in the Houses of Parliament. The idea, we created an interface online so that you could see that. And this is the robot. I've run out of time. My time management's bad. Basically, the robot um, wrote out what you typed in. Each, each time something was written out, it was automatically sent to Flickr pulled back into the website and you could see it. And people wrote an amazing amount of interesting comments. Um, even getting around the swear filters, as museums you'll know how complicated <laughs> the swear filter is. You leave it long enough, people will get around there. But it was that thing, it was put into a space and it, and it meant that people saw those actual things. We could have done it with a printer, but it was quite theatrical. So that last, I'm just going to leave you with this idea about a name for uh, information conveyed in an engaging way. Uh, and it's a story. And we think that digital has this ability to help, uh, help tell stories in more and more engaging ways. We've done it for lots of people in lots of places. The important thing really at the heart of that is the audience, is the visitor, is the message, the information you want to convey. That's, I think, the end of my little story. Hope it was useful. Let us know what you think. Either on Twitter or by speaking to me. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Lloyd! I'd like to thank Steve for proving Godwin's law of Museum Sorrow.